In this video, we're going to go over Lab 5 Individual Data Sheet Analysis. For this one, we have you perform three trials, and uh, we got some data beforehand of your height, sex, and the box height. Uh, so we'll do a few calculations based all, off all of this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, we are going to start with uh, the counter movement jump, the CMJ. The main reason is the other trials will not have your body weight like exactly where we need it, and especially the squat jump, uh, not the squat jump, the drop jump, because it uh, will, uh, you land on the force plate and then jump off, so it, no chance of getting your body weight. We need your body weight first for the subsequent ones, and so that's why we'll start with the counter movement jump. So taking a look at this, we're going to get a couple things set up here. I'm going to take this information, I'll just enter it. 1.81 for my height male and then center of mass height. It's just that times and we got to make sure we use the appropriate value for you. and body weight we will calculate. So on here, let's get the things set up first. Let's get rid of some of this extraneous stuff. My force on here looks for, for, for force plate one, uh, FZ. Eh, that's uh, not correct. Uh, it's not what I'm staying on the force plate. This number for force plate two, FZ, that's eh, much more like it in terms of what my body weight would be. So, we're going to delete everything we don't need. I'll keep X and Y for no particular reason, we just will. Doesn't matter that much whether or not we delete it. Then we'll add a column, time in seconds. Let's go ahead and delete this. All right, 0 0.001, 0 0.002. 0 .002. Double click that. Again, you have to highlight both of those to do that. Otherwise, you will either get just two all the way down or one all the way down. One thing we're going to have to do is we did a jump, or I did a jump here, and you did jump on yours. The time off the force plate doesn't matter to us. All the data past that point doesn't matter, so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight and delete that. Unneeded. Now, as per your document, for your individual tri trials, create a scatter plot for each of them uh, using force and time. That's going to be force in the Z direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So zero is when I'm off with the force plate. So I move my arms here, it looks like, just at the start slightly. Then I dip down, and then I put force back into the force plate and uh, did my jump. So it looks like, you know, I did about a half a second, a little bit more than a half second, but I'll do a full, full uh, half second of myself just kind of standing there. I'm going to take this stuff and put it here as well. Body weight. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this stuff on over. There we go. So, my body weight is gonna be the average for a half second. That's gonna only work for my data. I don't know what your data looks like. You will have to look and interpret appropriately. So about a half second, let's go right there. 0 0.5, that's half a second right there. Just the average. All right, I'm gonna go back to the end and it looks like, okay, I move my arms and then it goes down. So I'm gonna look for where it crosses and then continues going down on my data. If I did start just a little bit earlier here, it probably wouldn't make too much of a difference, but I'm going to do it just because. Again, you have to read your data to interpret. 
based off of what I'm saying and what the data looks like. So I'm going to go just short of a second. Yeah, okay. So it goes up and then starts coming down. And since I'm at about point, uh, 77.8, we'll call right here the start. I'm just going to add those cuts so it'll make, easier, e make it easier to jump around. So we start with zero impulse. Here's where we're going to do that impulse calculation. Let's do this minus my body weight plus the next one right above it. And then all that divided by two, multiply by the time difference. And we add the number above. Now, one thing before I do the double click is I'm going to add some dollar signs here. This keeps it so it's always pointing up at that, uh, that body weight. Again, add the dollar signs right there. Let's scroll down. Okay. Excellent. So this is perfect. This is a number I would expect. That's our net impulse. And we're not actually recording that up here, but we're going to go ahead and take that. It's going to be our last value. Okay, this thing. Okay, there we go. Divide it by our body weight. And we'll need our body weight in uh, kilograms. So about 2.6 meters per second. Again, those, uh, those formulas are here if you are wondering where I'm pulling those from. Kinetic energy, we'll get, take it as 1 half or 0 0.5 times body weight, and that body weight needs to be in Newtons, 9.81. I'll just add these. It's not entirely necessary, but just in case something goes wrong. Um, so 1 half body weight in kilograms, multiply by takeoff velocity squared. Cool. Jump height is going to be kinetic energy divided by body weight. And lastly, potential energy is going to be our body weight times the height that our center of mass traveled. So center of mass plus the jump height is about how high our center of mass traveled. Cool. That's potential energy. That's everything that we need here. Excellent. So if you want, you could go ahead and copy and paste that stuff on in. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the drop jump. This is the one where it's going to be done a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and get that back in the same sort of format. I use the same force plate. I can tell because this one actually reads zero right now. And uh, when I... Uh, what I'm going to do is, I want to know when this, when I start first touch the force plate. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to include one set of zeros before that. I'm going to delete everything else, everything else before all those zeros don't matter. It's just less to look at, less jumping around I have to do. So you can see the force is increasing, 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 decreasing, and I leave the force plate again. So we dropped, we landed, and then we jumped off the force plate. And everything after that doesn't matter. Everything after that doesn't matter. So I'm just going to include one set of zeros at the end there. And this is our data. So time in seconds, 0 0.001, 0 0.002. Yeah, I missed it. So our total recording is very short, uh, 0 0.674 seconds. So that's the time from when I basically touched the force plate to when I left it after, after that. I'm going to go ahead and copy the first couple things right here. Copy. And we're going to do a special paste here. What we're going to do is we're going to paste values. Do not paste this because you'll get a divide by zero that you see right there. Paste values. 
it won't make any sense uh, for if you do that. Uh, so, because it's not taking into account the same measurements and and the measurements that it is it would use wouldn't actually be your body weight. So that's why we can't use it. Um, there's going to be one small difference we do with uh, this calculation here uh, for the impulse. So impulse equals this minus body weight plus this minus body weight again divided by 2 and then times the time difference. So I did not add a zero up here. We're not doing the cumulative number here. And there's a reason for that. Um, it's because we have to exert a whole bunch of impulse to actually overcome this. And so the impulse number would be incredibly large if we were to do this. The reason being, with the squat jump and the, uh, and the counter movement jump, our starting velocity is zero. We're starting from a static position, zero. And then we're moving to a final velocity of a takeoff velocity. Here, we're going from a landing velocity, and our final velocity is uh, when we take off. So uh, we need to first figure out some of that stuff. Let's go back to the sheet here. So we've got our box height. I'm going to take this, I'm just going to drag it, not exactly drag it, but pull it into the drop jump so that we can just do the calculations in here. Eh, let's do, there we go, make it look a little bit prettier, I guess. So we have the equations up here, 2 times box height divided by gravity and the square root of that for the time. Actually, square root 2 times this divided by 9.81. Okay, so that's the time in seconds. And now we need to do what my landing velocity is. And, well, we know acceleration because uh, that's our fall time, our impact velocity. So equals this times 9.81. Perfect, 2.52. And that's actually going to be a negative number because uh, this is negative. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to point to it rather than move it over. This is our initial. This is our initial. So what we'll do is... If you remember, this is impulse force time. So what we need to do is divide it by our body weight, body weight in newtons, uh, not newtons, in kilogram, 9.81. And since this is our initial, it's going to be a minus minus if we were to write it on the right side. So well, to get rid of it on the right side, we'll then subtract it um, from both sides. But I'm going to go ahead and just do an addition since I started with the negative here. So make sure it reads like so and this is negative, otherwise you will get a number that doesn't make any sense. Double click that, oh wait, that's my fault. Now, uh, 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 oh, what happened here? Oh, that's that's why that's that's my fault. Double double time, my fault. I forgot to do that. All right. Wait. Okay. Let me fix that. I I thought of it and I just didn't do it. All right, there we go. And we can add them here for good measure as well. We should get the same numbers. Yep, we do. All right, so see how it goes from this initially when we land and we take off, well, blocked by this thing at 
this value. That is our takeoff velocity. So if we were to actually put all that stuff in, we get a really large impulse, um, net impulse for comparison, and eh, we don't want to mess with that. Let's take this stuff back over. So equals two, and this is just gonna be our last number. Kinetic energy is gonna be 0 0.5 times this divided by 9.81 times takeoff velocity, and I'll put it on the outside, squared. Cool, so it looks like it went up. Not bad. Kinetic energy divided by body weight, and potential energy, body weight times, plus that. All right, not bad. So that would be everything for drop jump. And we got one left, squat jump. Actually, I just realized I forgot to have, have you make a um, graph. So let's just do that real quick. So you got that graph as well. All right, so there's our graph, land, and then transitioning into the jump. Make sure you title and label those appropriately. All right. Same thing for the squat jump here. We just need to get into the format we need using force plate to FZ. Again, there's gonna be a jump in here. We'll first clear out all the unnecessary data. So everything after these zeros, after the first set of zeros is just superfluous. Unnecessary. Time. Whoops, accidentally hit Alt. And I did it again, missed it. All right. This is about 2.35 seconds. Let's graph this real quick because there's a lot of unnecessary data in there. Let's just see where whereabouts the jump happened. Okay, so it looks like it happened about 1.6 or so seconds in, 1.6-ish seconds. Not bad. What we'll do is we'll pull in This information, I'm gonna just copy and paste this stuff first. And then, again, body weight, paste values, although those the ones I copied from should be values anyway. So, I'm gonna look for where it starts increasing then decreasing here, or where it starts uh, increasing, okay, here we go, increasing above body weight, looks like it dips down just a hair, and that's fine, 7.7, seven. so it looks like it's starting to really, really decrease right about here, here-ish, yes, yes, that's what it's looking like on mine. So I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna add two sort of cuts as it were. I'll call this the start of the jump. Zero equals two. We'll do that impulse. And we'll see if I remember to actually do the dollar signs this time. All right, so I'm gonna go back and do those dollar signs. I said it out loud, so usually that helps, but uh, it's been known to happen, forgetting. All right, great, that's a number that looks real. That's just the area from here to here, just the net area, net area. And it's lower than uh, my 
uh, counter movement jump. Now we can start doing some calculations. So take off velocity. We got uh, this divided by body weight in eh, in newtons uh, divided by 9.81. There we go. That doesn't look right. What did I make make a mistake on? C okay, come on. All right. Oh, did I point to the wrong? Oh, I pointed to the wrong thing. That's that's my fault. Okay, I added a cut, and then I didn't actually go past the cut. That's that's my fault. All right, I took this one. It's actually this one. Okay, my apologies. That was just me going a little bit crazy, not realizing what I was doing. So again, get some numbers here. Jump height. And lastly, the uh, potential energy. All right, so we can see there's considerable difference in jump height 0.29 meters there's 0 0.38 0 0.35 so we'll go ahead and copy these on into the lab 5 let's see this one was the counter movement I'll, I'll copy these in and then I'll move them because this one was the counter movement. I'll make sure everything's in the right one. Drop jump. Again, make sure you're pasting values in. All right, doing a quick cut here. I realized uh, after I finished, I put this as potential instead of kinetic energy. Uh, so I've corrected that and it should be corrected on everything uh, from here. So we're gonna do the absolute value, looking at the absolute error of kinetic energy. And order doesn't matter since we are doing the absolute value. We just need to make sure to include drop jump and squat jump for this one. And then same thing. Drop jump, counter movement jump. And lastly, technically we should get about the same thing, uh, but just naming scheme, I was like, eh, I don't want someone to have to um, ask me if uh, something was wrong with it. So. All right, so those are our values and for kinetic energy differences, and it should be the same pretty much for the potential energy differences. Uh, potential energy just takes into account some more stuff um, because we shouldn't be adding too much more energy from to the system except through kinetic energy um, uh, overall. And potential energy when we're up in the air uh, is our total system energy when we're at the apex of our jump. So, anyways, that will conclude everything for this video. Let me know or your instructor know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.